Right now on News 4, windstorm response. Two utility companies could be fined millions of dollars. How the state says they came up short. A living legacy. How a late officer's name will live on at the Buffalo Police Department. But we don't truly understand that bond between the officer and his canine. Honoring heroes. I was like, why, why me? How the family of a fallen soldier is helping a local veteran. Live in high definition, this is Western New York's news leader. Now, News 4 at 11. And good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with a developing story involving two major utility companies. The State Public Service Commission says they could face millions of dollars in fines. They say both NYSEG and Rochester Gas and Electric violated their own emergency response plan after a windstorm earlier this year. More than 170,000 customers lost power throughout western New York and the Rochester area back in March. Some people didn't have the power turned back on for several days. Now, the PSC found a dozen violations between these two companies. They include not securing downed power lines within 36 hours. Well, tonight, Avangrid, which owns both companies, told us they are reviewing the state report. We have their full response on our website, WIVB.com. As for the weather today, we did see some snow come down across parts of western New York. And there's a chance that your drive to work could be a little slick in the morning. Our chief meteorologist, Todd Santos, is here with the forecast. Todd? And, you know, there are some of the areas where we dealt with some of the snow, where you're finding some of these minor coatings that are still outside. But there are also spots like here in North Buffalo, in our parking lot, there were still some wet areas from a little bit of drizzle we had earlier that if they don't dry in time, they'll end up freezing. So it'll make variable conditions. I don't think it's going to be a sheet of ice anywhere, uh, especially up around Buffalo, but you may find a few slick spots here and there. It's good uh, information to be armed with as you head out on the roads early in the morning. I noticed the lake effect has pretty much all but faded, and this is what we we're expecting as high pressure set up across the lakes. That will be with us for tomorrow, and it will lead to more sunshine. Uh, still cool temperatures, uh, but also the winds are starting to settle down, so the lakeshore flood warning for our immediate Lake Ontario counties uh, has been dropped early. That was supposed to go through 7 in the morning. It's expired already, uh, and you Notice the wind has backed off a little bit there. Those are sustained winds still out of the west northwest. Uh, temperature wise, well, we're finding more areas back to around freezing, but there are still some spots where uh, you may still have some wet ground and that sort of thing. It's going to take a few more hours to really get things to freeze. Warsaw at 34, but there are some other areas in Wyoming County right now that are already at freezing, uh, even through Erie County. You notice Springville there, 36 at the moment in Buffalo. So this model at least takes you through to the early morning, at least to give the concept, even while it may be a degree or so off just because this is raw model data, but six. AM, you get the idea that most all areas here in western New York will start off in the 20s uh, and or at least at freezing to the 20s and then in the afternoon we'll start to see some of these numbers getting into the lower 40s uh, at best. I think the upper end of things is that number you're seeing in Dunkirk. I don't expect to see anybody warmer than that for tomorrow. So at least for tonight, cool temperatures, breeze backing off and we've already started to see that. As far as the more active weather, that arrives in time for the weekend and starting early Saturday morning we get into some rain, then wind picks up during the daytime Saturday. Sun Sunday is where we transition over to snow and we'll find uh, some meaningful accumulation for at least a few areas that will require some plows. I don't think we'll need plows up around Buffalo, but I do think they may end up uh, with a scenario where we'll be using some salt for the uh, second half of the weekend. So we'll take a look at our preliminary numbers for Sunday's snowfall and head into next week coming up. Don, Jackie. Well, new at 11, Buffalo police say a stranger approached two young girls. This happened near the corner of Massachusetts Avenue and West Ferry yesterday afternoon. They say an African-American man in a gold vehicle approached two 14-year-old girls as they were walking home from school. They say he asked them personal questions, but they refused to answer. You're asked to call the Buffalo police if you think you know anything about this. A volunteer fire accused of stealing thousands of dollars from the department. Timothy Clure is charged with grand larceny. He was the treasurer for the River Road Volunteer Fire Department in the town of Tonawanda. Police say he stole more than $19,000 from the department since January. He'll be back in court on December 14th. 
A deadly mix of prescription and over-the-counter drugs has been sweeping through western New York. And now nine people are accused of pushing these pills and they're in jail now. People are buying what look like oxycodone pills. Instead, they're buying a deadly mix of uh, Tylenol and fentanyl. The drugs are found in California back in September. They're part of the opiate epidemic in western New York now. What makes these blue pills so dangerous and why we took the unusual step of warning Buffalo area residents about them in the middle of an ongoing investigation is that users could easily have thought they were just buying a prescription strength oxy pill. Well, nine men from Buffalo are now under arrest. So is a drug dealer from California. Investigators took more than 500 pills along with heroin, cocaine, and other drugs. A man who was accused of trying to run down police officers pleaded guilty today. Kenneth Pringle of Buffalo pleaded guilty to attempted assault. An officer tried to pull Pringle over last December. That led to a chase. Pringle got stuck in traffic. Several officers went to help. They say Pringle tried to run them over. Now, nobody was hurt. Pringle will be sentenced next month. This one hits you in the gut just because you knew him. There was another huge show of support tonight for a police officer who died in the line of duty. Officer Craig Lehner died after an accident during a training exercise in the Niagara River. News 4's Rachel Monjovi is here to tell us how tonight's event will help his legacy live on. Rachel? Yeah, Don and Jackie, if there's one thing we've learned about Officer Lehner, it's how much love he had for his canine shield. His memory lives on through shield, and now it will continue as the Buffalo Police Department looks to add another canine in his honor. Blue ribbons, police badges, and a Superman logo, all reminders of one of Buffalo's finest. And yet another effort to honor fallen officer Craig Lehner, Buffalo shows it truly is the city of good neighbors. It really is unbelievable. You know, as an officer, I think sometimes you get the opinion that society in general isn't necessarily very favorable towards law enforcement. It, it's a shame it takes a tragedy to be reminded that there is most of society does appreciate us. Hundreds dropped by Club Marcella for a fundraiser to benefit the Buffalo Police Department. Proceeds will go towards purchasing another canine for the force in Laner's honor. But if there's anything we can do to respect that person, the dignity of their life and their legacy, and also the respect, show the Buffalo Police Department that we're here for them. We have to do that. The average canine costs up to $12,000. The department currently has four active canines. Shield would make the fifth. He's expected to return to work in about a month with a new handler. And everybody's kind of taking turns on the canine team, keeping uh, Shield active and busy. So I'm sure he, he's anxious to get back to work. Um, you know, his drive, his excitement, and that hasn't seemed to change. So Laner's sister tells us how Shield meant the world to Craig and helped him get by every day. Any of us. We may have dogs, but we don't truly understand that bond between the officer and his canine. And it's amazing that somebody else will get that opportunity as well. Now, if anyone wants to donate to the police department for a new canine or the underwater rescue and recovery team or the Laner family, information on how to do so can be found on our website, WIVB.com. Reporting live, Rachel Monjovi, News 4 at 11. Roy Moore said today he is standing tall and not dropping out of the Alabama Senate race. He's fighting back against additional allegations of sexual harassment and assault. Three more women came forward today. One claims Moore forcibly kissed her while on a date in 1977. She was in high school. Moore was in his 30s at the time. Republican leaders have called on Moore to drop out of the special election. Many of you have recognized that this is an effort by Mitch McConnell and his cronies to steal this election from the people of Alabama, and they will not stand for it. Well, today a White House spokesperson said President Trump believes the people of Alabama should decide who will serve them in the Senate. And a sitting U.S. senator also had to respond to allegations of sexual misconduct today. Senator Al Franken apologized for groping a radio show host more than a decade ago. Weijia Jiang has the story from Capitol Hill. 
Well, you've got talent. The allegation stems from a 2006 USO tour involving Al Franken prior to being elected senator from Minnesota. And he just mashed his, his lips against my face. Los Angeles radio host Leanne Tweeden says Franken kissed her against her will during a rehearsal for a skit. I said, if you ever do that to me again, I'm not going to be so nice about it the second time. And I walked out and I just wanted to find a bathroom and I just wanted to rinse my mouth out. Tweeden also posted a photo in which Franken grins at the camera with his hands apparently over her breasts as she slept. Senator Franken first said he didn't remember the skit in the same way, but apologized to Tweeden. As for the photo, he later released a second statement saying, there's no excuse. I look at it now and I feel disgusted with myself. It isn't funny. It is completely inappropriate. Franken has agreed to cooperate with an ethics committee review. His colleagues on both sides of the aisle call his behavior disturbing. There's never an excuse for it. There's never uh, any way that you can defend it. It's just unacceptable behavior. Completely. Tweeden said she was inspired to speak out after hearing Congresswoman Jackie Spears' personal account of harassment. Both chambers of Congress recently passed mandatory anti-sexual harassment training for lawmakers and staff. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Straight ahead, how you can help the state keep snow off the roads this winter. Plus, a thank you for his service. Why today is so meaningful to the family of a fallen soldier and how they're making another vet's life a little easier.